AMG Hobby Top. This is pre-expo edition. The expo is nigh. It is upon us nearly, or as I like to call it, Shark Week, but lamer. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shark Week's pretty sweet. Like, I'm sorry. If you're comparing to Shark Week, it's not quite going to hold up to that level. But, you know, for the sports card calendar, it's one of our two big shows that we've got. Spring Expo and Fall Expo. But Spring Expo should be a fun one. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's the quieter of the two, but that isn't to say it's quiet. Because obviously we've no. got hockey playoffs going on. And mm -hmm. the Maple Leafs did win. So mm -hmm. that we got one more game between the start of the expo and this one. We got one more game on Wednesday. If the Leafs win, then the optimism will be high and probably Leaf cards will move quickly. So just yeah. some things to bear in mind. The optimism or negativity of the Leafs fan base <laughs> may have a bearing on some of the purchases during the expo. So it is a fact. So first, I want to welcome uh, Sherry. How are you today? I'm just wonderful. Excellent. Blair, how are you today? I'm just wonderful as well. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> And I'm mildly caffeinated and working on it. So that's, that's where <laughs> yeah. I think we're all sitting at. So we've got, obviously, this expo is going to, uh, this show is going to focus mainly on the expo here coming up. Uh, the collector of the scallops and collector of the people is already en route. I will mm -hmm. show you a couple of images as he starts making his trek, heading over <laughs> to uh, the epicenter of the sports card landscape for this weekend here, the expo. Yeah. And uh, yeah. one of the key things, uh, I'm already in the area. I'm in the neighborhood. For me, it's a hop, skip, and a jump, but I'll be making my visit down there. And hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, now that we've got a little bit of a different setup, and I'll talk about that in a second, mm -hmm. uh, we might be able to hopefully get some content that we'll be able to put up on the channel. So that's my plan. I, I want to, I'll, I'll coordinate with Sherry and the people. You know, maybe we'll get a, an in-depth interview with the collector of the scallops as, you know, he regales us with <laughs> pearls of wisdom. I don't know. We'll figure something out. I'd like to oh, have yeah. something if we can, and we'll try to do something related to that. And hopefully if that happens, it'll appear on the channel, and that's kind of the plan. Blair will not be yeah. joining us, but he will be with us in spirit. Blair is going to be holding down the fort. So you're saying, uh, Blair, that you're just going to be uh, giving away stuff in the attic, like throwing stuff at people <laughs> just as they walk by the attic, just like, pay attention to me! And just yes. don't at them. I'll be, I'll be doing whatever I can to get some attention. Wow, fantastic, <laughs> sensational, perfect. Okay, so let me quickly show, I'll show actually a couple of images here. So the first couple of images are just related to uh, the collector of the scallops as he makes his trek over. And then we will share a handful of items that came in the shop. This will be a slightly truncated episode, but we'll go through a couple of things quickly. So there's Steve loading up, uh, and I'm actually going to segue this into talking about some of the boxes, because originally Steve had alluded to the possibility of there not being as many boxes. There will be. So uh, I'll go over a couple of products that are going to be available at the booth here, and we'll also talk about where the booth is. So see, he's already got the thumbs up ready to go, and you can oh, see yeah. there the van is fully loaded with a bunch of items that Steve is carting over. So that's where the collector of the scallops is for the episode. He is currently moving in that direction he was 7 a.m sharp in his east coast lifestyle comfortable apparel mm -hmm. Very nice. local Very apparel nice. which is a great item steve loves it nice nice broadcasting and, from parts unknown what i should have been what i should have been doing is i should uh, is instead of in lieu of this episode i should have gotten to you know live stream just uh, his trip down you know he could just i live tried to get him to he he wasn't going for it damn oh well <laughs> So if you notice, he did load it up in there. You saw a number of boxes. So as I said, there is going to be some boxes. So this, uh, Sherry, this is the full list of items that are being started yep. over. Yep. Okay. So let me quickly go over what's on there in case you're curious. Uh, so they are going to have some wax there at the booth. Uh, mm -hmm. So you've got the 2023 Upper Deck Team Canada Juniors. You're going to have some boxes related to that. 22-23 uh, Clear Cut from Upper Deck SPX mm -hmm. Metal Universe Hobby. We're going to have a Lure Hobby, Ice Hobby, Opeachy Platinum Hobby, and Parker's Champions. So a number of different hockey products there that are included of it. 2324 Upper Deck Artifacts, 2324 Upper Deck SP Game Used. So that is a relatively new product. We've got that there. And then under the more miscellaneous category, you got Goodwin Champions Hockey Hobby 2023, 2023 mm -hmm. Tops Formula One Chrome Racing. Uh, then we got some of the AEW, the infamous AEW. Look, I'll, I'll go by and I'll just tell you what's good in it. I'll just point in the We're direction. We're just bringing it for Carlos. Basically, it has, that's probably it's got your name on it. More than likely. That's, I'll probably grab a couple boxes and nothing else. So 22 uh, AEW yeah. Lore, 23 AEW Hobby, UEFA uh, comp Competition Soccer from 2024 oh, Tops. Yep. Yep. 2022 uh, Upper Deck Moon, uh, Moonlight, uh, Upper Deck Spider-Man No Way Home 2023, Marvel mm -hmm. Platinum 2023, Thor Love and Thunder. So you got some of the non-sport included here. Fleer Ultra Midnight Suns, Garbage Pail Kids Series 1, Garbage Pail Kids uh, Series 1 Collectors from 2024 from Tops, And then a couple of baseball products, 2024 Tops Big League and 2024 Tops Chrome Black. Yeah. So it's a mouthful, but there was a number of different <laughs> items there, but different selection, different categories, sport, non-sport, baseball, hockey. You've got a whole area covered. It will be priced to sell. So come see us at the AMG booth. 
Perfect. And, and there it, is, after all that, there is actually something left in the store for me to sell. <laughs> As wow. I said, we're going to move from one thing to another here. So I want to make sure we uh, cover a whole gamut of things here. And then we'll take a couple of minutes to talk about it. So I'm, I'm pulling up here for the floor map briefly for the uh, expo itself. So for those of you who do check out the expo, a lot of times for a lot of you, the entrance is going to be up here near the front. And then when you go in, you're going to see the landmark you're looking for is the PWCC booth. So if you find the PWCC booth right across from it, what's called PE1 here. That is the AMG booth that you're looking for. That is where you find the collector scallops. That's where you find Sherry. And that's where you find the boxes and boxes of wax that I just named off. Also known as the Maritime Mafia Corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's right. They get, little, so, they get a little tangly over there. <laughs> it's quite the thing. It's quite the thing. So you can use the various landmarks. I do recommend, yeah. this, is what, this is a tip I would give folks for Expo. Familiarize, if you have not been already, if you've been a number of times, you can pretty much get the lay of the land pretty fast. But if you have not, familiarize yourself with the floor plan because there's three halls being used. I'm showing you the main hall. This is the big one, and that's where you can locate AMG. But obviously, when we talk about a lot of it, you're going to see a big old corridor. There's a bunch of dealers and booths that are there. Sometimes there's some interesting stuff there. I have seen things there no, in the past, time. so I want to point it out to you. But as you walk that way, that's where you head into the autograph pavilion. Once you start heading that way, pretty much front and center this time around is going to be the PSA Canada booth. Mm -hmm. And... Last time it was a whole production with the on-site grading. This time it's just taking in submissions, but it's going to be front and center there, nice and nice and clearly visible. So yeah. they've readjusted the configuration of it because mm -hmm. instead of having a whole little grading area, they've got the CSC marketplace back here with the stage, with the autograph pavilion. So there is going to be traffic going in that direction, but mm -hmm. PSA will be pretty clearly visible. You've got a yeah. lot of the graders there clearly visible in that area. MNT, KSA, Beckett has got its own section and PSA is right there. There's a nice big square yeah. there right at the end in that main hall. And there's a bunch of other dealers there, by the way, too. So check it oh, out if you want to check out that area. There's lots going on in that section. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, Brad will be leaving here about 1030, getting on the plane. So he's nice. excited. Nice, nice. So I want to make sure I at least touched on that for you. Like I said, familiarize yourself with the floor mm -hmm. plan, and then you will not be as overwhelmed or lost yeah. in the sheer amount of stuff going on. So I think that's important. All right, one more thing we'll do then, and we'll get into some more housekeeping. I will show you a handful of items, and we'll show you the most recent autograph signing of Brutus the Barber <laughs> Beefcake. I'm not saying it. <laughs> All right, so let me read a couple of comments from the last uh, from the last episode here, and we thank you as always for any comments and the engagement. And we have gotten over 270 subscribers, so we thank you for that, and we appreciate the likes and engagement on the videos. I'll also include across the scrolling ticker uh, the contact points. And it's always so in the description if you would need to reach out to the store or anyone there if you need quicker answers. Otherwise, if you want to leave a comment here, we'll get to it in the next episode. So first one here was, uh, do you know if there'll be any 2024 Topps opening day product released? I haven't seen anything about it yet. Do we know if any Topps opening day? I see. Yeah. So while well, Sherry's taking a look at that one, I'll read the other comment here. Uh, so this one's from Gotham Collections. Hey, cats. Uh, Dartmouth had their first comic book back issue flea market Comic Con. Apparently 200 people showed up. I need to know AMG is a hot spot for comics. Gotham is very much into the comics things. Uh, I will bring in some hot keys to bolster your inventory. Also, AMG is lots of awesome cars for low budget. Very impressive. We appreciate you as always for the support. Mm -hmm. And we'll give a heart to that comment. And then uh, Sherry will take a look at the 2024 <laughs> Tops yeah. opening day while we're doing that. Okay. So the, so appreciate the comments as always. Uh, and also I want to thank everybody who checked out the uh, Trailer Park Boys uh, little video that we put on there. Uh, it was pretty well received, and I, a number of people ended up enjoying the video, so we do appreciate that segment of it. So that's perfect. All right, so we got the comments covered. So let me go into a couple of things here related to uh, the signing. So I'll quickly show a couple of items here. Uh, we'll show a couple of pictures and images from that. And then, uh, as I said, we'll go into a couple of items that came in the shop, and that'll be the majority of the episode, aside from just giving some other tips and tricks for the expo. Okay, so first one is kind of a wide panoramic shot. I yep. guess this is of the signing as well. So it's kind of the line that formed uh, to see Bruce yep. the Barber Beefcake, Senor <laughs> Beefcake. Uh, here are some of the eight by tens that were included in it. So we did talk about a couple of the different gimmicks he underwent here. Uh, there are a couple of infamous ones. If memory serves me, and I was talking about before we start recording, I believe the one there with the face paint, the whole thing, I think that was Zodiac. Uh, yeah. I remember that. That was a very weird, I, I want to say that's 1994-ish, 1995. And I will say um, a very strange era in WCW. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Leslie basically got the job because he's Hulk Hogan's buddy. 
but he was able to parlay this into a main events. I want to say he had a, a title match against Hogan. Uh, so he was mm -hmm. able to parlay it, even though this gimmick was very strange. And he had a number of very strange gimmicks in WCW. So that was one of them. Uh, then right beside it, you got the Disciple when he was with the NWO. That was part of his affiliation directly again with Hogan. He's literally ho holding Hogan's belt over his shoulder. <laughs> so I guess it's got the NWO spray paint on it. And what he's mostly known for is Brutus the Barber Beefcake, which is what a lot of these other images are related to. So that's kind of a, a good uh, cross section. So here's the little signing area there with the table and everything set up. So it looks like a pretty good setup for an autograph signing. You got enough room for everybody to maneuver and be able to get their moment there to get stuff signed. And they got images with the kids, and he's got his uh, WBE logo. And he did bring in the shears. He did bring the shears, which is critically important if you're going to do the gimmick and do it properly. Oh, definitely. So we got a couple of images with folks posing, puts the sleeper hold on. So you, you're able to get your various poses in there as part of it. So that's pretty solid. So I'm yeah. just sipping through a couple of the images there of different folks. Uh, I think I think a couple of folks are really into it. Really, oh, really into it. Just yeah. uh, but it tells you that uh, people do enjoy the legendary characters. Mm -hmm. Now, one more thing here. So this is a little different angle, and he's signing one of these rings here. Now, yeah. obviously, you've got also an 8x10 there with Brutus the Barber King and the Ultimate Warrior, which mm -hmm. was a brief little run there where they were uh, briefly tag teaming. And I believe, memory serves me, I actually think I had that ring once upon a time. I think they were actually for the LJN figures. They were the big rubber yeah. ones, the very large yes. ones. Yeah. So that's a more old school one there when it was still the WWF. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a cool item. I think, and this one's a little worse for wear. So yeah. I think, I think given that one, you, you retire the ring, but I think it's kind of cool that he did have it signed and it yeah. is appropriate because that was oh, his era. So very yeah. much an appropriate item to get signed. Yeah, I loved that one. That was good. That's a pretty good. <laughs> I wanted to make sure we shared some of those images there. Yeah. So pretty good. I think that seems like it was a successful signing. Uh, it was well super folks. successful. We weren't entirely sure that's actually the first signing we've had in this location. Mm -hmm. Um, but the turnout was absolutely fantastic. I'd say 90% of the people that came in, we haven't seen. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you to everyone who did come out and we're happy that everything went well. Perfect. So I think that's encouraging. Uh, good to know. And not too surprising. A lot of those mm -hmm. 80s characters are very fondly remembered. People, oh, big uh, time. people remembered that era. So that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So let me go through a couple of different uh, cards here that were shared with me uh, that we'll do. And then, like I said, we'll finish up talking about Expo here and I'll give a couple more tips as well. And then we'll talk about any plans or anything related to that. So mm -hmm. real quick, we'll go through a couple of items. Oh, of I'm sorry, just to jump in. Go I ahead. didn't find the release date of the Tops opening day, but we mm -hmm. usually do get it. Um, so if I, if I find that, I'll uh, post it in the comments. Awesome. Sounds good. Appreciate that. All right, so let me finish up here with a couple of cards, and then we'll, like I said, we'll finish talking Expo. So first we got the Black Diamond Team Jumbos. We talked about mm. the variety of different possibilities for Connor Bedard. So here's one of those. we got a manufactured patch on there of the Black Hawk logo going along with an autograph. But right now, anything Connor Bedard is super hot. That's going to be one of the things that I'll talk about in a second about the whole Expo. That's going to be one of the interesting points that I'm going to be keeping an eye out on, uh, because that's always an interest of what's going to draw people's attention. The Connor Bedard chase is definitely still an item to strong attention. So here's one of the cards that you can pull with that Black Diamond product. Yeah. That's Back actually, the... uh, oh, sorry, Carlos. I was just going to jump in there. That one we just had on. That was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the second one that we pulled. I don't know if the other one was numbered out of 49 or a different number. Um, yes, I think, was it the other one, um, a Blackhawks logo? Or did I see that somewhere? Maybe it was a little different, but anyway, definitely similar style. I think, I mean, this one was pulled by another one of our good clients that comes in. And uh, so we were super happy that she, uh, she reached out and said she got that out of the box, but yeah, mm -hmm. I thought that might be the second one. I thought, I yeah, I think so. Or similar, but yeah. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. one other thing I'll say, uh, and Carter Bernard is a very young guy. That mm -hmm. autograph is looking rough, man. I, I gotta be honest. Like, I'm, I I wouldn't be super yeah. like, what the heck? Is, nope. What's what's going on over there? I don't see anything to do with Connor or Bedard. I have to agree. <laughs> I, 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 I don't see it. I think I, that'll I change in the next year. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say I don't think, but I don't think it's gonna get better. I think it's gonna get worse, no. and that's that's a little troubling. But anyway, nonetheless, a great pull. Yeah. Either way, a great pull. Uh, so from Black Diamond here as well, we've got Luke Hughes, uh, Diamond Relic Rookies. Nice looking yeah. card. It's not that Black Diamond doesn't have nice looking cards. It, the value proposition is a little bit tricky with it. 
but it does have the little gems on it. it does stick with the yeah. black diamond theme and mm -hmm. everything. So I think it's kind of neat. That looks like a pretty neat looking card. And it looks like you got the little holographic foil, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So that's number to 99. And I guess that would be the second biggest pull after Bader, the Luke uh, I, would, I would say uh, so. I would think so. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, big card. Pulled in store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now here's a Diamond Stars autograph from Black Diamond. This one's number 10 of mm -hmm. Austin Matthews, who had a nice goal uh, last night, actually. Mm -hmm. So again, I mentioned a little earlier, look, it, it seems silly, but given that you're in the Toronto area, by the way, it's not in Toronto, it's actually in Mississauga, yeah. outside of Toronto, but, you know, <laughs> people who live outside Toronto are very picky about this point. Yeah. But the point is that given you're still in the Toronto area, and given that the Leafs are in the playoffs and everything, look, short or long as the Leaf uh, playoff run may be, and generally it's pretty yeah. short, uh, the fortunes of the team at the time mm -hmm. of the Expo can have a lot of sway in how people look if the people are very optimistic then they are a little bit more encouraged to spend and yep. they might get a little more excited about items like yeah. this so very the important buzz, to bear in mind the Talk buzz or excitement absolutely <laughs> yeah, listen the dealers are sitting there rooting like please just be up in the series that's all we want at the beginning of the expo just be up in the series let people think they got hope it doesn't matter what happens after that just start <laughs> off being up in the yep. series uh so here's a 2017 uh, select mahomes silver prism uh, so I believe that, yeah, that should be the rookie year. And that is in a PSA nine. So that, that'd be a pretty nice card there. And in nine, yeah. that makes it a little more reasonable. I actually mm -hmm. checked the, uh, sorry to butt in again. Okay. I actually checked the pop just, I was going over Steve sent me the pictures, but it is actually a fairly low population on this one. I know it's a nine, but I think there was only like a hundred, maybe 120, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, like nine. So it's, and it's a pretty strong card for a nine even. So yeah, yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. one. Yeah, I think uh, in 2017, if memory serves me, I think that the uh, production run of uh, the select football was still relatively low. Right. So I think that helps a lot. Because, and yeah. then by 2018, mm -hmm. 2019 and beyond, the they started really turning on the printing press really hardcore. Yes. Where relatively speaking, uh, it, a lot more would be available. So that that's kind of a good combination of a little bit lower. I'm not saying mm -hmm. low, lower mm -hmm. relative to only a couple of years later. So here's a banner year, Connor Bedard again. Everything Bedard that they pull right now is a big pull for a lot of these folks. So I think this is from the draft banner, uh, basically, yeah. that they pulled this. And so when they say SP game used, uh, I will say that Upper Deck is very generous in the word game used. Yeah. This is a draft banner. There is no game involved, but game. nonetheless. The nonetheless, game of the game of drafting. The game of drafting. The game of drafting. <laughs> yeah. yes. We'll try anything. Yep. Uh, here's a Berdur All-Star memorabilia. That's a nice looking one. I like that even though the window's small, I like the fact that we actually have a stitch there in the package. Yeah. So I think that's a good looking piece. That's a nice uh, one. This was number to 15. So that's a cool one from the All-Star game in 1998. And this one here, we got a Luke Hughes uh, rookie ink sweaters mm -hmm. and then another one from Authentic Rookie. So we got a pair of Luke Hughes cards here. Mm -hmm. Number to 25, number to 49, two autographs, uh, one with a patch and one with a jersey. Uh, while again, not an autograph that I would write home about, at least no. there are letters. <laughs> yes. I can discern there are, or, in fact, letters in this letters. autograph. Uh, so that's already a step in the right direction. <laughs> this autograph area isn't very good, Blair. It's not, it's not good. It's, it's, it's pretty awful. Not John Beliveau like. Not so much, no. no. Pulling a so, name out of a hat. Yeah, here's a Parker's Champions memorable rookie booklet auto. So we got a Matty Veneers there. Uh, so you got basically, it is a booklet, and it, in the fold in half allows you to have a patch on top and then the autograph on bottom. And it looks like the autograph's in a cutout, which is actually mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a cool looking card. I like the display. So this is one yeah. of those ones where you have to get the holder that's going to showcase the whole thing. You want it open so that you can see mm -hmm. the whole image. Uh, but an interesting looking card for sure. And it uh, is a little bit different. So if you're a fan, I think that's kind of cool to have that, that option in there. Yeah, perfect. So some cool mm -hmm. cards that came in the shop yeah. this past week uh, that were on display. So a nice little mix. We got a very hockey heavy blend, although we did throw in the one football card in there, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Perfect. Okay. So a couple of things here just to finish up. We covered the main things that we talked about. We showed you where the booth was. We showed you where a lot of these things were. We did mention that we do in fact have wax coming up this time around. Uh, they're mm -hmm. collecting the scalps, collecting the people will be there purchasing the items. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave a couple of tips also. Uh, do I will reiterate. Uh, for Steve in this case, uh, if you the more preparation you have and the more you know what you have in terms of comps, in terms of any yeah. information you bring to the table, it's just going to make it easier. It'll make yeah. it a better experience. Uh, obviously, people can look stuff up, but mm -hmm. make your own life easier because when we're at the show, 
generally speaking, in the uh, in the expo, especially in that building, our internet's pretty good for the most part. Mm -hmm. But I would always remember that with that many people there running their phones and different cellular services mm -hmm. and everything, just bear in mind that, again, the more prepared you are, the easier yeah. it's going to make everything else. Yeah, Definitely. Don't feel, don't feel bad about the idea of negotiating. Uh, the art of mm -hmm. negotiating is not dead, but you want to be realistic in terms of it. That's why I said a little prep work ahead of time will go a long way for you. Definitely. And, uh, and one other thing I'll recommend just in general for Expo, uh, whatever you're planning on doing, if you already have a pretty good idea, if you're going to drop off stuff at the ComC booth, if you're going to drop off stuff at PSA, you know, the more prepared, same idea, the more prepared you are with your stuff. So like, for example, uh, right now I have this box here that I'm going to be dropping off at ComC. I already have the box prepared. Everything's in here. But then I got a little slip I can print out ahead of time. Well, if I do that, they just scan the barcode and I'm done. Mm -hmm. A little bit of prep work goes a long way in terms of making your own life a lot easier. And by the way, look stuff up. They have a code where you can save 30% off. It's on their website. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. the expo is eligible for it. So right there, a little bit of research ahead of time. I get to yeah. save 30% off submitting the thing. But there's stuff like that all over the show. You want to Definitely. take advantage of the wrapper redemption. Same yeah. thing. Which products? Go look them up. Go look mm -hmm. up what the conditions are. Go look up which dealers are available to them. Most of the time they have the little balloon. You need yeah. to know that. If you figure that out ahead of time, you'll make your own life easier. And then, oh, yeah, I'm buying the right product and I'm buying it from the right person and getting the stuff I need because a lot of times you need a little slip. Otherwise, yes. it doesn't count. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We will have a balloon. Yeah. It seems silly, <laughs> but the only reason I'm mentioning is because every year there's some folks that are new or have not mm -hmm. attended before. And yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this as somebody who's done, I want to say like more than 50 of these at this point. Mm -hmm. Like it's been over many years, twice a year and then more than 25 years of attending these shows. So yeah. comfortably more than 50 of them at this point. And every year there's somebody who didn't realize oh, I bought, Oh, I bought that product. It's like, but you bought it from a dealer who didn't have the balloon. They yeah. didn't give you anything. You go over to the upper deck booth and they're like, nothing we can do for you. There mm -hmm. are rules to follow. Yeah. It'll tell you which products it'll tell you which things it'll tell you the conditions. If you already know that in advance, you'll save yourself so many headaches. Mm -hmm. You'll buy the right thing, get the right price and everything. And you can take advantage of it and have a good time. There's a lot of it Definitely. there. Leave yourself enough time because uh, especially on the weekend, uh, some of those days, the it, there is a little bit of a lineup. So just whatever mm -hmm. you can do to prepare yourself a little bit ahead of time will make your life a lot easier. Yeah, For sure. Is, and it, is, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sherry. No, <clears throat> I was just going to say, um, same thing with like PSA, taking submissions in. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to have your submission completed, go on psacard.com and have that completed. And it's going to save you a lot of time at the booth too. Yeah, because it is, I mean, it's a busy show and it can be mm -hmm. a bit overwhelming. <laughs> and like Carla said, if it's your first time or, you know, um, uh, even, you know, your your first couple of times, it can be pretty overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, lots of stuff to see, lots to do, and uh, a lot of people. So, yeah, anything you can do to prep would be a big help to you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Absolutely. And uh, one last uh, tip or two that I'll offer. Uh, just again, just from my own experiences. Uh, if you're out there looking for certain specific things, if it's something that's commonly available, generally speaking, you will have multiple chances to see it. So feel free to kind of look around, mm -hmm. shop around a little bit. If it is a rare item, then you have a bit of a decision to make because uh, generally speaking, it won't be on every table. And if that's the case, then you might have to, you might want to then really consider making, doing the negotiation, making the mm -hmm. offer on it. Or you have to be willing to accept that somebody else may come by and scoop it up. Because if it is yeah. a rare item and somebody else sees that same thing, they may decide, nope, I'm willing to shell out the money and that's it. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's how that will work. Because I've seen both. Uh, if you're looking for a tougher item, then I tend to be a lot more aggressive uh, making the deal and pulling the trigger on that versus something that is like, yeah, that's kind of cool, but I'm going to see it at eight other tables. So mm -hmm. I have a chance to kind of shop around and find the price that I want for it. So figure out, again, if you know what you're looking for and which one makes the most sense for you, you can decide, should I buy that right now? Or am I better, or am I going to be able to make a full cycle of the show mm -hmm. and then come back around for it? And it's going to depend on what it is you're picking up. You know, autograph, like Larry Kardashian card. That's true. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, if you go to AMG booth, the autograph Blair eight by tens, they're, they're going to, while well, supplies last, like this, it could oh, be, God, yeah. they won't. you got, you got to snap them up or they're gone. <laughs> they won't last long. It's gonna I don't be crazy. think so. No, it's, it's going to be nuts. <laughs> So any other last uh, words then that we want to say just before uh, in relation to the expo or the preparation and everything? Uh... Yeah, no, like you said, um, preparation is key. Knowing what you have and your values is going to make a huge difference, whether you're coming to our booth or somebody else's. Um, 
check out the floor plans, kind of get an idea of where you're going, what you're doing, uh, especially if you have limited time there. But other than that, we hope to see you at the AMG booth. I got some new tablecloths, some new uh, booth materials. So Ooh. should stand out nice and bright this year. Fancy, fancy. What, I, what I'm mostly excited about is that now is now that Sherry is fully in charge of the booth. I, I expect there will be no lack of supplies. There will be oh, multiple there's pens. pens. Not there will be pens. Any pen. I now have branded pens. Oh my goodness. So, I don't uh, have one of those. Oh, you Sherry, you, you, you better make sure you, I, I, I better get a Carlos one. I better walk over and, oh, get, yeah. and get a Carlos. I, I want my AMG collectibles pen. <laughs> yeah. Now I know. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So then we'll uh, we'll make sure we cover a lot of that. As I said, hopefully, if we get a chance, we'll try to do some stuff related to it or work something out. Uh, yeah. No promises yet on what it's going to be, but I'm going to try. We're definitely going to give oh, it a shot now that we kind of know where everybody is. Yeah. yeah. We're going to make it. We're going to see what we can do to have some stuff there for you. And then we'll uh, cover more of it now on the next show where we actually do the post expo, a little post mortem and give everybody a rundown. And mm -hmm. again, you can check out the stuff. Uh, same thing. Since they are, uh, this is just a tip from experience here. If you do go to the AMG booth and you see some of the wax, the, the wax price is going to be pretty aggressive. It is, it is mm -hmm. price to sell. And mm -hmm. if that's the case, then, you know, if you want, do your little look around, but if you see the price that you want, just, just grab the boxes yeah. <laughs> and, and, and get, and get, and get on with it so that you can uh, enjoy because ripping, ripping boxes that there is uh, is a key thing. Oh, and one last thing I'll touch on based on that. Uh, okay. Up to you. You do you. There are going to be supplies in the room. Mm -hmm. I tend to bring my own. I yeah. usually will bring some boxes mm -hmm. and some penny sleeves and top loaders and stuff like that. Not that you can't get them in the room, but sometimes you got to pay a little extra. If yeah. you already have it, it makes it a little easier. That's just Big a tip. Time. Just Great a tip call. for me. Yeah. Just, just yeah. throwing it out there. I already have some of my stuff already prepared and I pack that with me when I go in so mm -hmm. that I'm ready to go. Especially if I'm opening boxes or anything like that. I already have the materials to be able to swap. Also, dirty top loaders and things. Eh, in the garbage oh, yeah. it goes. Swap yeah. them out with some fresh ones. Mm-hmm. Pro tip, pro tip. Definitely. Just throwing that in there. Good, good idea. All right. So that's it for us on this one. We appreciate everybody's engagement and everything. We'd appreciate the likes. We appreciate some more subscriptions. Let's start creeping it up now towards 300. That'll be the next yeah. goal that we want to shoot for. And otherwise, uh, as I said, you can check out amgcollectibles.ca and the Instagram and everything. And as we go along, maybe you'll see some images and things from the Instagram. So again, mm -hmm. come by, say hello to the folks at the booth. And, uh, you know, Maybe, maybe we should just include a picture of Blair and then people can stand behind and pose. <laughs> yeah. I think that'd be great. I, I agree. Yeah. I'll just put Blair's face on Deadpool. Well, I can't take that, Deadpool, actually. Steve's already gone. Cool, right? but... yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think I think it won't be for this year. Maybe next year, maybe next time around that Blair isn't able to be there. Then you just get like a stick figure and just like put his head on. Yeah. It. yeah. And then everybody can just pose beside it. And it's like, it's like he was we'll there. get creative. Absolutely. Amazing sensation. <laughs> So for Sherry and for Blair, we uh, collect your scalps, collecting the people off in the distance, wherever yeah. he is on route on the road. Uh, we will check those folks. Yeah, we will check those folks out at the expo. Hopefully, we get a chance to see several of you there. Uh, have a great time if you do go. And otherwise, uh, we'll report back next week with our findings from the expo. Mm -hmm. So that's it for us to stem around. Thanks very much, and we will catch you in the next episode.